Sarah Durgin Bagui is a Democrat running in heavily Republican House District 52 in November. Despite our polarized politics, she believes she can win crossover votes against longtime Republican incumbent Thad Altman. Welcome to I Am Brevard. I'm Isadora Ringel. I interviewed Begee this week. Follow my interview with Representative Altman last week. She talked about growing up poor in Trinidad and Tobago and her long shot chances of winning the election. Watch. Sita Begee, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. It's my honor and my privilege to be here. Uh, so you are a Democrat running in House District 52, which covers South Central Brevard. You're running against a longtime incumbent, Thad Altman. Um, just start explaining why you decided to run. This is a very tough district for a Democrat. It uh, it's, leans heavily Republican, right? Yeah. For a, Actually, I'm a proud Democrat running um, for state representative in District 52. And yes, you're right. It's 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 very difficult because I am a woman. I'm a minority, um, and I've decided to challenge a, a career politician, a lifelong politician. But I believe that this is a time for people to come together, whether it's Republican or Democrat. This is a time I see an opening for all of us to be labeled Americans, and to put politics aside and do what's good for our district, for our county, and for our people. I, I got into the race because I just f realized to myself one day that politics have become so polarized and politicians are so emboldened by special interests and lobbyists. And I've been looking at the financial records of the top 1% companies and, and who they contribute to and all that and I realize that a lot of the politicians in Tallahassee and Washington once elected um, they just they don't do what's right for all the people um, sometimes it looks to me of course that they're doing it more for their friends and what they can get from it uh, and so what is your strategy um, to win to win this race how do you how do you differentiate yourself from your opponent well I've been living in Brevard County for, I want to say, 24 years. And um, I've proven that I can mix and mingle and listen and communicate, not just with Democrats, but Republicans, um, people who are minorities, people um, who are here, uh, just from all walks of life. Um, I got involved in so many of the various groups. Um, the I shouldn't say um. That's something I should be saying. Um, <laughs> uh, as a talk you should, show host, you yeah. should have taken the Toastmasters class. I am <laughs> in it, actually. I just said. But uh, I'm in uh, Space Coast Progressive, Progressive Alliance. I also joined the American Women's Business Association about six years ago. I am part of um, so many groups in town, um, the League of Women Voters as well. And over the course of time, I have made friends with people um, who are Democrats, Republicans, lawyers, doctors, janitors, taxi drivers, everybody. And one of the nice things about being able to speak to people and listen is that you hear their concerns and their issues. And I believe at the end of the day, everyone wants the same thing. It's just that we have a different path to get there. Uh, most people want uh, a good education. They want affordable housing. They want health, affordable health care. They want a clean lagoon. And so when you talk to people, we're all the same. L labeling one as a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent or an NPA um, doesn't really do justice to human beings. But th but yet again, we live in a time where we're as divided as we have ever been, probably, and people really vote on that R or that D. You think you can get some crossover votes from, I definitely from Republicans? Can. Yeah, I can because. Again, it's because we lead by we live by example, and my husband and I also le lead by example. We have uh, four children, all went to provide public schools, Satellite, Delora, and Holland. And our youngest is an attorney. She went to the University of Virginia Law School, and she's practicing in um, Orlando. She makes a lot of more money than I do. <laughs> and uh, my other my other daughter is a business owner, Kimberly. Then my son BJ is an engineer and he's doing extremely well as well. And then my son Mikey has a degree in micro and molecular biology and he went to LA to find himself. 
Um, he's doing very good out there as well as a businessman, so that's good. So we lead by example. We raised our children. We got involved in the public school system. We also um, invested well, always worked. I have been on earth for 54 years, and out of that 54 years, I have had a steady job for, I want to say, 30 years. And maybe so, more, maybe and more. And what are the issues that you want to focus on if elected? Always education, the environment, and the economy. The three E's, right? Education, I believe, um, is the only way for our students to join such a diverse global world. But what exactly do you want to do for education? I think we should invest in public schools. Our teachers should be paid what they're worth. I do believe we have to look at class size and we have to look at communities. People, you know, often politicians talk about education and it's a code word around um, time to be elected, election year. But the bottom line is when you talk about education, you're not just fixing the teachers and the children in the school and the curriculum and, and who's for Common Core and who is for K through 12 and public universities. You have to look at the communities. You cannot expect a child to come to school with a hungry belly, a stomach that's empty, and be doing well in school. You can't expect a child who's just witnessed domestic violence in their home to come to school and function well. So I say, you know, we have to put more social workers in our schools, invest in public education, invest in communities. Then for the economy, I believe we have to promote jobs with not just benefits that people just throw out there, but look at the benefits, sincere benefits. Give people an affordable wage. Do you support uh, a minimum wage of $15, which is what Andrew Gillum, the gubernatorial candidate, is proposing? $15 an hour would be great, but there's arguments on both sides. Someone actually uh, asked me about that a couple days ago. They said, well, how can you pay somebody who is making um, flipping burgers $15 an hour? When I know when my daughter uh, got out of um, UCF with a business degree, her job, she was making $13 an hour. So I think it's debatable. I'm not sure if it's 15, but it'll be close. Yeah, I think you have to be look at it because, you know, what they're saying is, well, you know, it'll cost more for a burger. But then again, then you have to look at the social structure of society. If that person is making $15 an hour, they'll be able to afford a home. They'll have a, a better lifestyle for themselves and their children. And then you have to look at health care as well. Is that company willing to give health care benefits? So a lot of things to look at. But I do believe we need to wa raise uh, the wages, livable and, um, wage. Andrew Gillum is proposing an increase in Florida's corporate tax, which he says will pay for um, higher teacher salaries, I believe, starting at $50,000. Do you support increasing the corporate tax as your Democratic De nominee? Definitely. As a proud Democrat, I do believe that corporations do benefit from an educated society, an educated workforce. It's the only way for people to come out of poverty, join the middle class, and actually live a life on earth that all of us want, a life that's beneficial to us and our families. Yes, I do support that. Um, critics obviously say that you might stymie economic growth uh, and jobs and companies will not want to move to Florida because of a higher corporate uh, tax rate. What do you say about that? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I mean, we, my husband had a, a thriving uh, medical practice in Rockledge and um, we paid our fair share and then some. People are not going to go broke. They're already the 1% or in the top 10% paying a few more dollars per year or per month is not going to hurt the big corporations. And let's talk about health care. You support a, a Medicaid expansion under the Affordable Care Act. Florida has turned down that opportunity. Um, the legislature for a couple of years in a row tried to, to pass a bill, uh, some form of Medicaid expansion, but then never made it to the governor's desk. Do you support that? But also, how do you see that happening when we have a legislature that is controlled by Republicans? Well, again, when one is elected into higher office, it's not really about your political party and voting party lines and you know seeing what you can get from that party and the donors. I think what we need to do if we get elected is sit down with people and talk about real issues that are affecting the people in our district, our constituents. 
And there are people here in Brevard that will get, tell you that on 10 or $11 an hour, we can't put food on the table. We can't buy books for our children. We can't pay a co-payment at a doctor's office. So I would say you have to sit down and talk to people, and then you have to go to Tallahassee and speak with the legislators and say, listen, this is what's happening in my district. This is why we need Medicaid expansion. The very, very poor automatically will get Medicaid. The very rich can write a check for health insurance. The people who are suffering are the ones in the middle class. And so I think we have to give people a break. Yeah. And so let's move on to the lagoon, which is the top local issue. Uh, Thad Altman, the, your opponent, uh, has been in the legislature a long time, kind of knows how things work up there, what can it, what can it be done. How do you differentiate, differentiate yourself on that particular issue, which a lot of people agree that he's quite knowledgeable and strong on it? Well, my name is Sita, and it means uh, keeper of the earth. So ever since I was little, I always paid attention to what's going on around me and um, our environment. The Indian River Lagoon did not become polluted with such horrible contamination uh, from runoff overnight. It took years. And Mr. Altman has been uh, elected into office, I suppose, over 20 years, maybe more. Um, what has he done for that, right? You, we all talk about, well, we, we legislate and we write bills and we try to get, bring funds to our district. But actually, did he actually sit down with people from the Marine Resource Council or FIT and look at what's happening? I lived in Tortoise Island on the river for about 22 years, and I watched that river turn black and murky right in my backyard with muck, with runoff, with the leaking sewer to septic you know, runoff. And um, I feel like it's time for us to stop talking and time for action. What is the action that you can promise voters you will take in Tallahassee? One thing I learned about running for office is not to promise anything. But what I do know is um, we, we do have areas in Brevard where people will convert the, sep the septic tanks to sewer if they're educated. Education is the key to everything, right? So we sit down with people and we talk to them and say, this is what's happening. You've got a leaking septic tank. And that person would say, well, we need some assistance. Well, the state ought to help bring somebody into the district to help convert those old tanks and, and clean out those old pipes. Um, also, when people are building houses, we've, um, we've, we've had a few houses built in the past few years as investment properties and stuff. And I noticed that a lot of the contractors, um, they don't, they're not really held accountable for their part of what they're building and what they're doing. All those materials that are laying on the ground when it rains, when it floods, it's going into the rivers. So I think we have to hold some of the uh, contractors as well responsible. So I would try to, you know, listen to people, look at what's going on, and see if we can get some more funds, matching funds from the state to help the municipality, municipalities here in Brevard so that we could clean up. And I always say education is a key. Um, if you educate people about what they're eating, their environment, you put value on the environment, put value in where you live, um, you, you can change people's minds. So I think the key to it is education and try to get some funds from the state to help. Um, and you were born in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and it's nice to have someone else with an accent on the show because I'm usually the only one. Yeah. <laughs> and the question I always get, oh, you're from Brazil. How did you end up in Melbourne? Uh, so I'm going to ask you that same question. Uh, tell us a little bit about your story, how you ended up here. Well, I'm one of 18 children. Wow. Hence, I do believe in birth control. <laughs> Big time. I do. Um, I, I, was, I was raised um, in Trinidad and Tobago in a small village. Um, I, I had a very challenging childhood. Uh, we did not have running water. We did not have indoor plumbing. Uh, the first house I remember um, living in is a house made with um, leaves, those leaves, those carrot leaves, and uh, mud walls. Um, my mom would use mud to um, surface the bottom of the house, and I helped. Um, so I grew up very humble. And one of the things I cherish is the ability to know where I came from and where I'm going. Out of the 18 brothers and sisters, my father had to make a decision which child will be able to 
attend elementary, middle, and high school, which child would get an arranged marriage, and which child would help him to raise other children, siblings. And so in my case, I was uh, maybe one, two of us were able to attend uh, elementary, middle, and high school, and I was one of those. But I always knew that education was the key to getting out of poverty. That's why I'm so I'm and such an advocate. How long ago did you move to the U.S.? I moved to the U.S. when I was 19. Okay. I was 19 years old when I moved to the U.S. I came with my former husband, um, um, and we lived in Hollywood, Florida, and then we lived in Tampa. Um, it was not a, a very good marriage because there was a lot of domestic violence. So I am a survivor of domestic violence. Um, a proud survivor and then I left I went to nursing school and I met my husband Dr. Biggie and we've been married 28 years Wow! Uh, it, uh, it's unreal I don't even feel like I'm that old <laughs> but it's I've had a I've lived a life of maybe 10 women or maybe more um, every single topic that you speak about in life with me whether it's education violence um, poverty investing saving for a rainy day birth control, um, you know, I've been there. And that's one of the things that I don't think a lot of politicians can bring to Washington or Tallahassee. I have the experience to lead from my heart. And I give credit for that to my dear mother and father that um, although they weren't perfect, they tried. Wow, very, very interesting story. Um, and you, I have a book. Did you know I have a book called 18 Brothers and Sisters? I didn't. That's like, I have three, and I thought that was a lot. I actually gave a copy of my book to um, President Clinton. Okay. And I sent one to President Obama, and I received a lovely letter from the White House. I think one of the sweetest things about life is remaining humble. And this is why I think I can connect with people from all walks of life, because I... I understand what it is to to have one slice of bread and wanting a second slice and I, we didn't even have butter sometimes <laughs> so you know I remember my mom having to you know we all talk about recycling and sustainability right we lived it yeah uh, and um, you mentioned yourself you are a minority woman and you are a Democrat in a district that represents some of the wealthiest parts of Brevard Vieira Suntree, uh, parts of Melbourne, and also Satellite Beach, those areas. Um, how is it for you? You you can be sort of like a fish out of water here in this district. Do you ever feel that way? And do you think that that's something that might stand in your way of you being successful su successful as a politician? Not at all. I, I mean, I lived in Tortoise Island, um, you know, where everyone there does very well in life, right? Um, but what I notice is once people get to know you, I mean, you know, you're constantly being judged uh, for your profession, color of your skin, where you come from, your accent. And I have that ability of once I sit down and speak with people, they understand where I'm coming from. I remember once um, when we moved to Tortoise Island, I joined one of the committees, um, the welcome-in committee. And all the ladies were talking about, you know, if we have our, someone to clean our home. And I remember this one woman saying, oh my God, I can't believe she doesn't have somebody to clean her home. Well, back then, we had four children. We had to pay four college plans. We had a hefty mortgage. Living on the river wasn't cheap. Car payments, gas. I was working, getting my kids ready for school and going to work. And um, when I t talked to her and I said, well, listen, I prefer to do that. That's who I am. She understood where I was coming from. But at the same time, a few years later, I saw the same woman working at Publix. They lost everything in an economic downturn. So I've learned not to judge people and not to try to, you know, one-up the other person because you don't know, your turn is coming. Sure, and uh, one of the things that has happened since 2016 in Brevard is the Democratic Party has become much more organized uh, with a lot more members, volunteers. You've been here in Brevard for how long? 24 or 25 years. So how have you seen your party progress, especially in the last two years, compared to what it was when you first moved here? Well, change is good. Change is always good, and we all have to adapt. What happened was I think people saw the country being polarized either to the right or either to the left. 
I'm more of a middle person. I try to listen to both sides. Um, and I see a lot of people felt, after the elections the last couple of years, people felt as though their voice didn't matter, as if their vote didn't count. And so a lot more people joined the Democratic Party um, just because they want, they want to be heard. And they've got issues too. A lot of people lost jobs. A lot of people um, invested in houses that went under. And people are struggling out there. So I think we, we're seeing people in our party that are real, that have real issues and concerns. And I, I don't like when either party use code words. And our party, when you come to one of the Democratic Party meetings, you hear about people who are talking about affordable housing. You hear about a livable wage. You hear about education. You see people energized to clean up the Indian River Lagoon. You see real people. I've been to uh, a few Republican events as well, and um, some of them are my friends. But it's more about you know money and business and how to make more money. But at the end of the day, we need to have compassion and empathy, and we also have to understand that all of us we're in this together. You know, we're in this, whether we like it or not, we're all Americans, and I don't think it makes such a big difference if you're a Democrat or Republican. But our party got energized because people care about real issues. Um, so the energy is definitely there in terms of results. Have you seen the party working to get more results? Do you? And what is the strategy? The party is working to put real Americans into office that are not emboldened or, or, or by special interests or by lobbyists. I have not, I've seen every single Democrat who's running for office, they all care about the core issues, how to make people's lives better, how to make sure that when people go to bed at night, they're safe and their children are safe and they have health care and a, a good job and, and they just don't talk. Most of the Democrats I know, they, they walk it. It's not that we're there just because we want to rah, rah, rah. I mean, it is, a, it is what democracy is all about. It's a group of beautiful, well, people who um, But the, the question is, does that win elections? I think it will. I think it will because at the end of the day, people need to not look at who is a Republican and who is a Democrat. They need to look at the issues. I mean, do you have someone in your home or in your immediate family or friend circle that um, is unable to put food on the table or don't have health coverage or have a child who's struggling in school? Do you, did you have difficulty finding a job because you're a minority or a woman? Do you have someone that you need to sit down and speak with them about um, you know, sex education at an appropriate age as well as an academic and trade? Do you have someone who's struggling at work? And all of us know those people. Not all of us are lucky enough to be in the top 1% or the top 10%. And so that, that's our role as human beings, is to sit down with each other and communicate and start a dialogue. Because when you do, you find out that we're all the same. It's just we have different ways of finding that end result. And how do you, gonna, how do you think you're going to work with Republicans in, in Tallahassee? Because everything you're saying is, is great, but uh, you're going into a highly partisan environment if you win, um, I in think which I'm it win. is a battle. Yeah, I, I, I can, because just like I'm talking to you, um, when I had my campaign kickoff at my home, we had Republicans and Democrats, um, and I don't know, I think I invited you, I'm not sure if you came, but I had... Um, I don't think I was invited. Really? See, <laughs> I'm just kidding. See, the thing is, I threw my hat in the ring like really <laughs> late, and then I was waiting for someone to throw like a big shindig for me, and I'm like, you know what, forget it, I can cook. So I invited over 100 people. I made curry chicken, rice, a salad, a, a veggie shepherd's pie. It looks like I missed a great party. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling a little offended yeah, yeah, that I, I wasn't I, invited. I, but. So, so I did all of that and I cooked. I got up at six in the morning and I started cooking and I cooked for 100 people and I invited them. And uh, people came and they contributed and we had a wonderful kickoff. And we, I spoke about the same things. You know, what's affecting you? What's affecting me? And how effective can I be to communicate? And when my husband made his speech to our friends, uh, we, we did it by the pool outside, it was very nice. My husband said, you know, first of all, I want to thank all our friends for coming. We didn't say we want to thank Democrats or Republicans because we had both. And um, 
I have a lot of Republican friends in this county, and I have a lot of Democratic friends, but I don't see them as a Republican or a Democrat. I see them as human beings who I just happen to like. Yeah. And so they came to our party, they contributed, and a lot of people have told me behind the scenes and in front of my face that they like my attitude, that it's positive. I, I enjoy waking up every day and enjoying my earthly life, you know. So I had a great campaign kickoff with a lot of people from all walks of life that were there, and that's how I'm going to lead when I go to Tallahassee. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to have a big potluck right there, too, and invite <laughs> all of them. So to. we have just over a minute left, but if elected, what would be the first bill that you ever file? I would like to see people get a livable wage. I would, because I feel... Would it know, be a, a bill to increase the minimum wage? Of course, of course. So how much? Increase it. I would say anywhere between 13 and 15. Only because, you know, when I... When I have a, a table that has food on it, and my children are eating, or my grandchildren, I know that everybody else at the end of the night, I want the same thing. And, and, and we can't just use code words to divide our nation, words like immigrant, or babies, or you know, jobs with, you know, we have to say things that we know we can fix. And there, there's just and too And you think many that bill will pass? I you can know, tell you that I don't think it will. But we're running short here. We have only 30 you know, it seconds. It may not pass, but I, I think that even if you, people listen to us and they could bring it down a notch, but it, it has to be increased. I know so many people Isadora, that are working for 10 to $12 an hour trying to make ends meet. And I would like to ask all legislators in Tallahassee, tell me how you are going to do it with $10 an hour. See that we're running out of time, but thank you so much for being here. Uh, good luck with your campaign. Thank you. That's it for I Am Brevard today. You can rewatch all of our episodes on Florida Today's YouTube channel. I'll see you again next week.